Hey there, welcome back to another episode. In this video, we'll be discussing about the heat map. Uh, heat map is a two dimensional graphical representation of the data where the individual values that are contained in a matrix are represented in form of colors. So, let's say you have a very large amount of data. Let me show you one example. Let's say you have a very large amount of data, like uh, these are very few columns, um, but let's say you have hundreds of thousands of features and you don't know what features might be useful for your particular set of findings. So with the help of heat map, we can get a quick start to our findings like, okay, so these are the colors that might be useful for our findings. Let's say RH and FFMC or wind and DC. So the heat map shows which variables are correlated to each other on the scale of negative one to positive one. The features that are more close to positive one are said to be perfectly positive correlated and which are close to a negative one are said to be perfectly negative correlated. Few things that we need to keep in mind that the heat map could be best useful like uh, if we are providing some unnecessary data then we always know the principle that garbage in is equal to garbage out. So we have to be very careful what amount of what are the values that are we giving as an input and it works usually on numerical data. It works on correlation and we can only correlate numerical features and the way it works like this is a formula for Pearson correlation so and it works on pairs so it is also important for us to analyze which set of data are having the null values because since it is based on means so suppose if this value is empty then when we'll be subtracting it from the mean then we'll be getting the mean exactly which will affect our overall values in this formula. A few important points that we need to always take care of is it should be numerical category. Anyways, the Pandas data frame will take care of the numerical categories. It will automatically discard the categorical features. And the main thing that we should take care of is we should not be having any null values because it will affect the, it will shift the mean and it when it will shift the mean then we will getting the different correlation value we can quickly create the heat map in python in just three steps let me fire up my jupyter notebook so in python we can easily create a heat map in just three steps the first step is to load the libraries so i'm going to load the required libraries So the libraries are loaded. Now we'll be loading our data frame. So let me load my data frame. Okay, we are using this file. It is a forest file on data from Kaggle. So and I have stored this in our directory in which I am creating this pypynb file. So for loading the data frame, we have to use a pandas read csv model since it's a csv file if the file is in the same directory then we can simply provide the file name or we can provide the path since i'm opening the jupyter notebook in the same directory so i can simply provide the file name and it is forestfires.csv Let us take a look at our data frame. So we'll take a look at first 10 rows of our data frame. So as you can see, we are having some categorical features as well, month and days. And we can also convert this into numerical features by using dummy variables. But since it is, uh, if, if we'll do the label encoder, then it will encode this as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So again, this won't be good for our mean since the the number which will be having let's say if it is starting from sunday then the saturday will be as uh, will be having a coded value of six so each saturday and along with the corresponding feature uh, our mean will be shifted which won't be good for our data and when we do df.core which will give us a correlation among all these features so as you can see the pandas library is intelligent enough it is automatically discarding this month and days which are categorical features so we are having only numerical features so i'll save this value in a variable let's say our data equals to df.core and 
then I'll be generating the heat map and we'll provide the data so this is how initially our heat map looks for customizing this graph we can use uh, pyplot option to have our customized size and dpi so when we say plt dot figure now fix size accepts our tuple and it is like width into height so we can say we want a width of 10 and then 7 and for generating good quality graph we can say dpi equals to 200 then this will create a block inside which our graph will be fitted now we can copy this again here then we can do plt dot plot this will plot the graph so as you can see we are having a larger and bigger graph and we can again we can again get more more clarity by changing this dpi so it is getting better and better so our heat map is generated now how to read this heat map first we have to look for the scale as you can see we are having somewhere somewhere here we are having 0, 0.0 and below this we are having a negative correlation and above this we are having a positive correlation so the lighter the color the highly the positive correlation the darker the color the negatively correlated so the heat map is symmetric and we can either have a look over this area or we can have a look at this area and these are the variables since area with the area will always be the same the correlation will be the same and strain with the rain is same and RH with the RH is same so what we have to look we have to look somewhere here and we can see the lighter the color the positive correlated so this is somewhat brighter color but again we are not sure so if we want to know with how much value these features are correlated to each other we can simply use annotation and by saying annotate equals to true it will show us the values so again it will help further in analyzing which are how much correlated with each other so as we can see in the ISI is more correlated with FFMC and these are a couple of features where we can have a look for exploring our data so this provides us a quick start in analyzing our large data sets for more clarity we can also say line width equals to true okay this accepts a value so let's say we are having a value of one then it will insert the lines between the values so again we can have more clarity and you can change the colors of this map as well so you can always have a go at the official website and from the, the color palette you can choose different color palettes like rocket, macro, flare, crest, magma so where it is is my personal favorite <laughs> I'll use this one see map equals to where it is yeah so our heat map is created so if you want to save this figure for some presentation or some project work you can always save the figure by use I'll use that at the end like plt dot save fig and the name of the file you want to save as so I'll say trial dot png by changing the extension you can change the file extension by itself here like if you want to save as jpeg or you want to save as svg or you want to save as pdf just provide the name of the extension it will automatically convert here so when i say this the trial png should be in the current directory see we are having our trial.png so this is a figure which we can use in our, any of our presentation. So Seaborn Python is easy to use and one can tweak the Seaborn plots to one's requirements. You can refer to the documentation of Seaborn for creating other impressive charts that you can put to your use for analyzing. So if you have found this video useful, 
give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe till then stay tuned i'll see you soon